brothers and sisters. Ooh, I got chills all over my body. Just singing with the Spirit to our Lord and Savior how great He is. Amen? Amen. And how graceful and how, how loving He is to all His people, all His creation. Today is a new day and tomorrow is going to get better because you and I are going to read the Word of God and learn how much He loves all creation, especially the Jews. Amen? Amen. But before we get started, I'd like to say a prayer, so please bow your heads with me and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I thank you, Lord, for putting the scriptures together in the order that you want me to read them. I pray, Father, that you give me double the Holy Spirit and that it is your words that speak out of my mouth not mine. I pray that all the people you have drawn to watch this video, that you open all of their eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to your amazing word and what it is you want to convey to them. And your will always be done, Father, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. But sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20. And we'll start reading in verse 33. As I live, says the Lord God, Surely with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out, I will rule over you. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you have scattered. With our mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and where I will plead my case with you face to face. Just as I pleaded my case with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead my case with you, says the Lord God. I will make you pass under the rod. I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge the rebels from among you and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out of the country where they dwell, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Now here, brothers and sisters, he's definitely talking to the Israelites. And he says he will bring them back from the lands that they have been scattered. And that happened in 1948, as you know. He's brought them back to the land he promised them when he brought them out of bondage from Egypt. Amen? Amen. But he's going to purge out the evil that is in that land. That is keeping them from salvation and receiving Yeshua in their heart. Now the second passage we will read is found in the book of Luke chapter 20. And Jesus gives a parable starting verse 9. Then he began to tell the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, leased it to vine dressers, and went into a far country for a long time. Now at the vintage time, he sent his servant to the vine dressers, that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the vine dressers beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent another servant, and they beat him also, and treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And again, he sent a third, 
And they wounded him also and cast him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Probably they will respect him when they see him. But then the vine dressers saw him, and they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. Now, many parables are hard to understand. But this one... Pretty simple. You see, the owner of the vineyard is God Almighty. And the leaders of the church of the Jewish congregation are the vine dressers. And the servants he sends multiple times are the prophets. But they beat them, and they killed them too. So he sends his only begotten son to save them. You see, Jesus, Yeshua, came for the Jews first. And they killed him. Because they wanted their kingdom. They did not want the Messiah to come to rule and they lose their respect, their honor. So they deceive the people to keep them from being saved. Peter was the first preacher of the word of God, the gospel. And he preached to the Jews and they accepted him they accepted Yeshua in their heart. But you see, the Pharisees, they wanted to keep the old law, the old covenant. Jesus is the new covenant, right? Let me read you a few verses. You won't be able to keep up. You can write them down, but I always put it in the description so you can go back and look at them. In Romans 11.24, it reads, For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into the cultivation of the olive tree, how much more will these, who are natural branches, be grafted into the, their own olive tree? Gentiles were given the opportunity to receive Yeshua also. The new covenant wasn't just for the Jews. It was for the Jews first, and they received him first. But then Paul was sent out to the Gentiles after the Jews rejected Paul. And he preached the word of God to the Gentiles, and they became saved. So Gentiles cannot say, well, okay, the Jews crucified Jesus, and so they can't come back. No, God loves the Jews. He loved them then, and he still loves them very much. And the first passage we read said, he will bring them back, but he will purge out these leaders that are keeping them, deceiving them, keeping the veil over their face. You see, there's a veil over the face of, of the Jews in Israel today that are not saved. Moses, when he would go up on the holy mountain to speak to God face to face, 
and God is in a flaming fire. He would come down, his face was glowing, probably like sunburn. And the people were fearful and gave him much respect. So he wore a veil over his face. And scripture says that he would keep the veil on until he went to see God again. Scripture never says that he goes every single day. So at some point, the glowing, the redness would go away, but he kept it on. And the Holy Spirit let me know and is letting you know he let, kept it on because of the respect that he was receiving from the people. But see, the Pharisees were doing the same thing. They wanted to keep the veil over the Jews, over the congregation, not see Jesus, not see Yeshua, the true Savior of the world that was predicted to come and die for the sins of the world, the Jews first and then the Gentiles. Because they want to continue getting that respect from the congregation that would rather do sacrifices daily. And someday they will. They'll build another temple on the Temple Mount and they'll do sacrifices again and deceive the people. But Yeshua was the ultimate sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice that was needed for the world. And so we can just ask for forgiveness with remorse in our heart, and God forgives us. Praise God. Praise Yeshua. Amen? Amen. You see, he says his yoke is easy. Take hold of it. But the Pharisees would rather have that, that hard yoke to hold on to, to carry, and do sacrifices every day, offerings every day, with the priesthood changing, there needed to be a change in the law. There is no need for tents to give tithes. The new covenant is to give out of your heart whatever your heart desires. But Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, the offering. If the offering of goats and lambs and sprinkle blood around the altar seven times will forgive sins, how much more will the only begotten Son who came from His throne, incarnated in human form, to die a crucifixion and arise and conquer death, the grave, for remission of sins, how much more of the blood of Jesus will forgive your sins forevermore? And so the Jews need to wake up they need to hear this message and stop listening to the deceivers. In Luke 5.39, it says, No one having drunk the old wine immediately desires new, for he says the old is better. Okay? So that's the perception of most of the Jews that believe in God in Israel today is the old covenant, the old wine, is better than the new. So they're not ready to receive the new. They think it's better, but it's not. Amen? Amen. If you're saved today and you have the Holy Spirit, you know the new covenant, Jesus, is better. Amen? Amen. Because you feel and know the Holy Spirit is in you, helping you, helping you in salvation, working out your salvation for you. Amen? Amen. So praise God. Praise Yeshua. In Psalms 118.22, it reads, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Okay, the builders are who? Those are rabbis. Those are the preachers. And they rejected the stone. Right? The vine dressers rejected the Son of God who was sent. Kill him. And we will have the air. We will have it all. All the goods. All the power. All the money. Huh. 
In the book of Mark 2.22, it reads, And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But the new wine must be put into new wineskins. Okay, the wine is the new covenant, the new wine. The old wine is the old covenant. Okay? And so, you can't mix both. They wanted their cake and eat it too. You understand? They wanted to worship Jesus. Okay, we'll become Christians. Nazarenes. But we're still going to believe the first covenant. We'll circumcise our children. Which is not a bad thing. It's clean. But it was a requirement. The first covenant, you had to. The new covenant, God circumcises your heart in a pure, loving heart. Amen. Amen. Mm. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. You understand? If you have Christ inside of you, you have the Holy Spirit in you. You are a new creation. You're not the old wineskin. You're the new wineskin with the new wine inside of you. Working out your salvation. In fear and trembling, though. You still have to respect God and keep your walk with Yeshua, Jesus. He knows you're not perfect. Only one that walked the earth perfect was Yeshua. So he knows you're going to make a mistake. And praise God, praise Yeshua for what he had done. You ask for forgiveness every night in your heart with remorse. And it's forgiven. It's washed away. He no longer remembers it. But you've got to ask. You have to have that respect. Get on your knees every night and ask the Lord to forgive you for the sins you've done and the sins you've done that you don't know what they were. Sometimes you can sin and not realize it. Amen? Amen. In Revelations 2, verses 4 and 5, reads, Nevertheless, I have this against you. He's talking about a church. That you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. The lampstand is the pastor, the preacher the rabbi, all of the above. doesn't matter if it's a Gentile or Christian church preaching wrong, deceiving you, telling you you can go be an adulteress, an homosexual, a lesbian, a fornicator, and God loves everybody and you're going to make it. Or a rabbi saying, this Yeshua is a false prophet. Don't believe him. Don't even mention his name. That's what they tell the people. Don't even mention his name in the country. Can you imagine? So where the parable says, what is God, the owner of the vine dresser, going to do when he comes back to those who killed his son and kept his chosen loved ones, the Jews we loved more than anything, to come to him and receive that free grace that he died for them first. You think he's just going to say, okay, you're the seed of Abraham. Come on and enjoy the kingdom of heaven. No. He will take them out and cast them into the lake of fire and brimstone where the devil and his angels are. Trust me. This message is not to correct the church or the ministers of the church. This message is to bring anyone to Christ, to Yeshua, to give their life to, to him. 
to the Israelites first. The message is to the Jews first. He came for you first. He loves you dearly. And he tells you in the old text, in Exodus, when he talks about marriage, if you marry a woman, you get a divorce. She marries another man and she wants to come back. She cannot come back to you because she is defiled. But he tells you in one of the prophetic books that it's true, right? And you agree. And he says, but you know what? I love you and I will forgive you. Just come back to me. And I will forgive your sins and not remember them. And you will be with me in the kingdom of heaven. You understand? So brothers and sisters, if you want to give your life to the Lord today, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, or maybe you backslid and become a prodigal son or daughter, and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, please bow your heads with me and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son to die on a cross for my sins. And thank you, Yeshua, for being obedient unto death. And Father, forgive me for all the sins that I have done. And all the sins I've done that I don't know what they are. Mm. We have true remorse, Father. Please forgive us. And lead us out of temptation. Help us to renew our mind. Take this carnal mind away from us. And renew our mind completely, Father. When you feel we're worthy, fill us with the Holy Spirit, Father. And renew this stony heart into a pure, loving, circumcised heart. And help us to share the gospel with others. And your will always be done, Father, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So if you said that prayer, if you don't have a Bible, get one. And read it every day. The only way we know how to please God and do His will is to read the truth, and that's the Bible. You need to fellowship. I'm here every Sunday at home worship, and on Wednesday I have a Bible study. Feel free to join in. And if not, find a genuine Christian church to worship with. And you'll know the genuine Christian church because they will be reading the Word of God. They will be preaching the Gospel, the New Testament. They will preach both. And if they're not, find a different church. And worship with the Spirit. When you sing, sing with your soul and spirit, not just with your lips. Mean it. And it's power against the devil. The devil cannot stand the Word of God, recite the Word of God, read the Word of God. He's not there. He will flee. Sing worship songs in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. And he won't be there. He will flee. And use the power of the blood of Jesus to rebuke the devil if he is tempting you, as Michael did in Jude. Say, the Lord rebuke you. And then add, by the blood of Jesus, or in Jesus' name. And he's gone. He cannot stand the word Jesus. He cannot stand the gospel. And he cannot stand worship songs. All right, brothers and sisters? All right. So today is a new day and tomorrow's going to get better because we are going to be prepared to meet our Lord and Savior face to face. Amen. Amen.